build log. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you click right up there and go take a look. That is where we built the skirts, which is the foundation for this whole entire costume. So make sure you check it out before moving on to part two. In part two, we are going to be constructing Lucia's bodice. Lucia's bodice is the most complicated part of her entire costume. It features a fitted bodice with princess seams and a sweetheart neckline, along with some swirly durly piping along the top and a scallop placket in the front. And where in the world are we gonna put a zipper? Oh, it's okay. We are gonna figure it all out today. This is gonna be pretty complicated, so feel free to rewind and pause as much as you need to to make sense of what's going on. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and jump right in. So before we even start sewing, we need to figure out how we're going to make this bodice. Like I said, there's no good place to put a zipper. You have this piping that goes all the way around the top of the bodice, and if we were to interrupt that with a zipper, it would look pretty funky. But thankfully, Lucia also has this button placket that goes over the front and has some cute scallops on it. So I have decided that I am going to make that placket actually functional, and behind it is going to be a zipper. So it's kind of like a hidden zipper. Pretty cool. Now that we know how we're going to put this thing together, let's go ahead and get our pattern ready. My base pattern is the same pattern I used for my new Ichigo costume. It's a basic fitted princess seam pattern. I've made a mock-up and I'm fitting it again to make sure everything fits perfectly and modifying whatever I need to for Lucia's design. Once my pattern is complete, I am ready to cut out some fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out all my pieces I'm going to be cutting the inner facing, the duck canvas, and the lining just like normal, but for this pink satin, since we have an extra piece that's gonna flap over here, I have to cut one extra front center piece and make sure that I extend the center front seam by about two inches just to make sure we have enough room. So with all of that cut out, let's go ahead and interface all of our pink satin pieces. And once those are interfaced, I'm going to go ahead and flat line my duck canvas onto the crepe satin. To do this, I'm going to simply run a basting stitch around all the edges, and once they've been basted together, I can use them like normal. What flat lining does is it makes the two pieces of fabric act like one, so that way you don't get any sort of ripples or pulls or tugs in your fabric, and it's acting like one sturdy piece of material. So now that all of our pieces are prepped, it's time to start putting them together and making our bodice. This is where things get a little bit confusing, so hang on to your bootstraps and let's get going. The first thing we need to do is insert our zipper. I know this is a little bit backwards, normally we put the zipper in last, but in order to make sure that everything fits properly and our zipper and button placket are actually working, we need to do this first. I'm going to be using a separating zipper, so this way I can put the bodice on a lot like a jacket, zip it up, and then snap it shut. So I'm going to attach my zipper to my two front center pieces, not the extended one, just the two regular ones. With those attached, I'm going to make sure my zipper works, and if it all works well, we are good to go. Next we're going to be moving on to this button placket. The first thing I'm going to do is to create the scallops that go along the front edge. To do this, I am going to simply draw them on however I think that they need to be, using something as a guide. I'm using a mug here, but you can use really whatever you want as long as it's a circle. And you're gonna wanna make sure that they are kind of spaced somewhat evenly. Once that you have your scallops in a place that you like them, we're going to just go ahead and stitch our two extra pieces together. So we'll go along the top and then follow our scallops and then along the bottom. Once that's finished, go ahead, trim off your excess material, flip it inside out and give it a really good ironing. Now here you can see we have the scallops that go on the front of Lucia's bodice. All right, 
now we can start attaching things for real. I'm going to go ahead and line the front right piece of my bodice where I attached that zipper. So I'm going to attach my lining piece on the top, the side, and the bottom. Not up the bust seam, we don't need to attach it there. So with that front center piece lined, we're going to flip that inside out. Make sure it's all crisp and ironed. So now we're going to attach it to our button placket. So we're going to line up our front center piece with the zipper and our front center piece with the scallops and line them up along the bust line. So here on this bust seam, it should be the exact same cut since they were made from the same pattern piece and you should be able to line them up pretty easily. Once those are lined up, go ahead and baste them together. I'm also making sure I don't catch my lining in this while I'm stitching. I want to leave the lining free flowing. So I baste those together and at this point I'm going to put my zipper back together and make sure that if I fold my placket over it covers the entire zipper. I'm not gonna lie guys, this took me quite a few tries to not only figure out what I was doing but also to get it to actually look well. Now that our zipper is working, our button placket looks really nice over the top and we can just attach the rest of the bodice just like usual. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off our fashion layer and make sure that we are pressing open our seams. As you're putting together your fashion layer, don't forget to insert your ruffle down the bust seams. This is a very basic ruffle out of a nice netting material. I cut three times as much material as I would need, ran a basting stitch, and pulled it together to ruffle it and then put it into my seam. Very, very simple to do. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the lining layer. I put my entire lining together and at this point I realized I wanted to add just a couple steel bones for a little bit more stability. So I added these onto the lining layer using strips of duck canvas. I simply stitched around the entire bone and made sure to really finish off those top and bottom edges so they wouldn't start poking through anywhere. Okay, so we have our lining layer and our fashion layer and we need to put them together but we first need to figure out our ruffly sleeves. So these sleeves went through a few different iterations on my costume using different types of material. In the end, I decided to use the light pink crepe with our glitter netting on top, as well as a layer of our sequins with netting on top as well. I put the netting on top of the sequins to make sure it was comfortable against my skin and wouldn't snag my wig all too much. To make my ruffles, I cut out three times as much material as I needed and two times as wide. I folded my ruffles over to create a nice clean edge and put the two different types of ruffle on top of each other, then ran a nice long basting stitch and was able to ruffle them from there. Now to create our strap, I'm going to be using some hot pink spandex material that looks absolutely beautiful and super duper sparkly. In order to make sure that it doesn't stretch and pull as we are creating our sleeve, I'm going to put a whole bunch of interfacing, so much that if you pull at it, it does not move at all. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that to one side of our ruffle. After this, we're going to fold it over and we'll blind stitch the other side down. And now we have two beautiful sleeves. Okay, so now we can really start putting our bodice together. Thank goodness! First thing I'm going to do is attach our sleeves to our fashion layer to make sure I have them where I like them. I'm going to line up the front part with our front bust seam, and then the back I'm going to put a little bit close together in the middle, not quite on our back center seams. Once you have those where you like them, we are ready to attach our lining. Yay! So to do this, I'm going to lay out my fashion layer and then lay out my lining on top, right sides together making sure to twist and pull and take in wherever I need to so that they lay perfectly flat and do not have any excess material or ruffles or pulls anywhere. So once I have those laying flat on top of each other, I'm going to go ahead and pin around all of my edges and then stitch it all together. At this point, you can trim, turn it inside out. We're looking great! But where are we gonna turn this inside out from? If you remember earlier, we attached part of our lining to our center front with the zipper. We never attached that to the rest of our lining layer. So we have a gap here that we can turn inside out. And once we've turned it inside out, we'll go through and blind stitch it shut so it looks like a complete lining. 
great so our bodice is put together at this point I've tried it on I've made sure everything fits our little invisible zipper is working perfectly everything is going great so now that we have a functioning bodice we need to go through and start adding our details we're gonna start with this beautiful swirly piping that goes around the bust line the first thing we need to do is create our piping I went through a few different stages trying different materials to make this piping and in the end I settled on using upholstery foam and our hot pink spandex. So I cut a piece of upholstery foam that was long enough for our entire bust seam as well as our swirls in the center and I made it about twice as thick as I wanted it to be on our bodice. Once I had this very long piece of upholstery foam cut out, I also cut out a piece of our spandex material. At this point, I went around and I pulled our spandex very, very tight against our upholstery foam, folding the upholstery foam in half, and then I went along and I stitched this entire line. So now you have this very, very long pink metallic snake looking thing. And now we get to attach it to our bodice. With our bodice on my dress form, I'm going to go ahead and pin it into place, making sure everything is exactly where I want it. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and baste it with our machine onto our bodice. You could also baste it on by hand. To be honest, basting it with the machine was probably a bad idea. I broke a lot of needles, but it worked for me. Once it's basted in place, I'm going to go ahead and hand stitch the rest of it together. So I'm going to hand stitch the top edge of our piping to the top edge of our bodice, getting pretty close if not touching the lining. After the top's been attached, I'm going to go ahead and blind stitch the bottom of the piping onto the fashion layer of our bodice as well. I'm being extra careful not to go through our lining. I want to make sure our lining looks very, very clean and you can't see any stitching in it. So now our piping is held in place we can make our little curls by simply curling our piping and then hand stitching it on. And after that, I'm going to go through and remove our basting stitches. I want our lining to be very, very clean and not have any extra stitches in it, so I just plucked those out. In the last episode of this series, we created this super sequined sparkly skirt and I said it was going to be attached to the bodice. The reason I'm doing this is because it's going to be really easy to put on and I don't have to worry about it shifting all over the place. So I'm going to go through and hand stitch the skirt onto our bodice. After that, I'm going to hand stitch on a piece of bias tape, starting with the bottom and then going on to the top. This way there are no open seams anywhere and it acts a bit like waist tape showing where the skirt should sit on your body. So now that our skirt is attached, we just have to do a few more little details. I'm going to add some big chunky pearls to our straps just for a little bit more pizzazz you could say. And now we're going to go ahead and put our closures. For the front of the bodice, I'm going to be attaching snaps to for the front of the bodice, I'm going to be attaching snaps underneath each of our scallops. And these are going to be very large whopper popper snaps to make sure they hold in place. With our snaps in place, we're going to add our buttons. These are resin cast gems that I have painted and then attached to flat back pins so that way I can take them on and off as needed. And now the last bit of closure we're going to add is actually on our piping. Lucia's piping looks like it is touching, like I said, doesn't look like there's any sort of zipper or closure while she's wearing her bodice. So I'm going to try and make ours look like it's touching as well by attaching a very small hook and eye to our piping. This way, once it's worn, it'll pull our piping together and hold it into place. And with that, our bodice is finished. I am in love with this bodice. It's so fun to wear. It's absolutely beautiful and I just, I love it. It feels like a real mermaid princess. I can twirl and I can dance and I absolutely adore it. Let me know if you've been building this along with me or if you've learned any new techniques. I would love to hear about them in the comments below. As always, leave a like and subscribe. Whatever makes you happy, it also makes me happy. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Next time we're going to go over Lucia's accessories like her gloves and her boots and such and I hope to see you there. 
as always, keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I will see you all next time. Bye!